Dr. Stephanie Drumheller from the Department of Earth and Planetary Sciences at the University of Tennessee. How do you know what a bite mark is a bite mark? It's a good question. Um, when you have something like a bite mark, you definitely have impact damage behind that. So you have crushing, you have fracturing, the bone gets deformed, you can see evidence of that. And we look at not only you know, was there crushing damage here, but a lot of times you can actually see multiple sort of punctures related to a single biting event. So you might see a row of different impact marks all together in an arc, kind of like what you would expect from the jaw of an organism. Many different organisms actually have rather, we'll say, specific looking teeth. So certain shapes go with different groups. And that shape is also reflected in the damage that you're going to see on the bone. I'm finding some patterns in the bite marks. Um, there's actually a lot of difference in what these guys are eating that you can broadly classify by the shapes of their heads. So if you, if you think about this, they don't have thumbs, they, they don't have silverware. If they're going to be interacting with a food item, it's pretty much their mouths that they're going to have to use. And we have some animals that have very long, rather broad snouts. We have some that have sort of shorter snouts. We have some that have these long needle-shaped snouts, things like gharials. They all seem to line up with sort of what they're focusing on eating in the ecosystem. So if you have a, a long, narrow snout, you're probably eating smaller prey, um, sometimes fish, but not always. So sometimes small amphibians, stuff like that. If you have a big, broad snout, you're more of a generalist. The little boxy-headed guys are probably focusing on maybe harder prey in the fossil record. So we can tease things out that way. Then we have this interesting sort of, as you say, diagnostic pattern where they leave these bisected marks. The teeth, they're conical, but they have an extra ridge on the freshly erupted teeth. They're constantly shedding teeth, so the older ones get worn away, but the new ones still have it. And it leaves a mark where you have sort of another score on the inside of the main body of the mark. It seems to be characteristic across the group, but some of the species aren't making that, and we're still trying to tease out exactly why, but there's a little bit more variation in the shape of the teeth and how they're using them than maybe people have expected. It's a bit of a, an odd answer for me, actually. Um, I, I specifically got into bite marks, not because of anything I took in paleontology, but because I took a forensic anthropology class just as a lark in undergrad. I went to the University of Tennessee. They're rather well known for their forensics program. And I thought, well, you know, it's my last semester. I got to take one more class. This one fits and it sounds really interesting. So I go into a class that's all about solving things like murders, and they had a whole section in the middle on bone surface modifications. And while I didn't necessarily want to go into it from the forensic side of things, I realized this could be applied to paleontology where I was interested in going.